Thanks everybody for coming. Please uh, remember to pick up the handouts. Also a reminder of the basketball media availability 240 today over the Taylor Room at the Coliseum. And a reminder, no live streaming. Um, as you guys know, uh, today's uh, Veterans Day. We got two special guests I'd like to recognize: uh, Colonel Todd Feeney and uh, his son, Captain Trevor uh, Feeney, both combat pilots. Uh, appreciate all you've done and all the service you've provided to our country. Also, Coach Dooley, Marine veteran, and uh, appreciate all you've done. And his son-in-law, Destry Rogers. Thank you for all the service you guys give. You guys have given. Certainly appreciate that. Um, and with that, you know, we move on to Auburn. Uh, tremendous program, tremendous football team. Uh, you know, they got two <laughs> really tough losses in which they played two really good football teams and uh, played them right down to the wire. Uh, but they've got a tremendous program. Uh, Gus has done a great job. Uh, he's playing with a freshman quarterback who I think is going to be a really talented player in this league for a long time. Um, he's been in some really tough games already, and he's played really well. Um, and then you look across the board, um, opening with Oregon, who's one of the best teams in the country, to beat those guys and be a true freshman and go out there and do that, it's really hard to do. Um, their defense speaks for itself. They've got a ton of guys that are going to be drafted on it. they got guys that seem like they have played in our conference for 10 years. Um, and it seems that we played against that defensive group a lot because all those guys seem like they started as freshmen from the secondary to the front. Um, so they've done a great job. Coach Steele does a great job with their defense. They play really hard um, and they've got a, a really good football team. So we've got a huge challenge this week and um, especially coming off the physical game we just had, uh, it'll be a challenge this week to you know get our guys prepared, healed up and uh, ready to go against um, a really tough football team in a tough environment to play in uh, on the road at Auburn. But that's what the SEC is about, and that's the next game up for us. Kirby, a lot of people have been looking forward to watching your offensive line go up against their defensive front. Um, how much do blocking schemes and strategies change from week to week? I mean, without giving too much away, two weeks ago we were asking you about Grenard and Zuniga and how to, how to stop them, and obviously you, you've touched on Auburn's front. How does it change from week to week when you talk about those kind of strategies? And is it different this week compared to maybe Florida a couple weeks ago? Well, I mean, the matchups are different every week. The schemes are not extravagant or a lot different. I mean, every, every offense, you know, has a different way to present a play, but they block the play the same way. I mean, Gus's offense, they're going to run certain plays, but they're going to have a different presentation to try to window dress it and make it a different picture the same way our guys will do. So the matchups change. The schemes don't change a lot. Uh, they got really physical players up front. They strike blockers well. They play really hard, and they rotate a lot of guys that play in there. And um, they've, they've proven that by how they played some really good offenses. Coach, I think – I think you said in the past something effect of surviving the first quarter against Gus until you figure out what he does. What what does he does what does he do that, that's so different that makes him a tough matchup? I know you said something about window dressing and formations, but is it really that different than other offenses? Yeah, I mean it's very different. They they do a good job of uh, changing things up. You you throw in the tempo with it, you throw in some of the most elite speed guys in the country on the perimeter, and um, you, what you get a recipe for is potential big plays. And uh, they do a good job of attacking your perimeter and your edges. I mean, he's, he has the, the ability to get on the perimeter with every play, but also pound you and grind you. You know, a lot of teams don't, aren't committed to the run. and They don't run uh, gap scheme plays, and they don't, they don't run things like that, where these guys are not, you know, they have, they have all the runs. They have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, but in every one of them, they've got the ability to get the ball on the perimeter. So, and they've got players to get it on the perimeter with, so he does a good job changing that up. Kirby, when you, when you think about the best defenses you've coached uh, in your career, um, how, how does this one characteristically or, or some of the traits they have compared to, you know, say 2011 where you had a lot of uh, talent that went on to the NFL the next year? Uh, wh what stands out about this defense? Uh, the number one thing that stands out is their work ethic. I mean, they, 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 they work really hard every day. Um, the meetings, the, the game planning meetings are a joy to be in because they're very interactive, meaning they communicate with you. They don't just sit there and listen. They answer questions. They ask questions. Um, they take on a personality of their defensive staff, which is energetic and, uh, 
and play hard. Um, I mean, you're always going to have certain qualities with a good defense, which is physical, fast, uh, good, good open field tacklers. Um, they've got some of those same traits as the, the good defenses I've been able to be around. But um, this group probably doesn't have just the star elite uh, player. There's no guy on there that you can say is just, you know, some going to be a first round pick. That's not what this is made of. It's made of, of a group of guys that uh, buy into doing it the right way and play team defense. And, um, and we've been very fortunate with that and got to continue to do that. Down the stretch run, you got to be able to tackle and not give up big plays. Following up on that, Coach, you, uh, with the defense, you alluded to it Saturday about the job that you thought your defensive staff is, is, is doing. This is a young defensive staff and a pretty young defense. Can you just uh, expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I think somebody mentioned that there was a couple third downs that I was thinking it was three true freshmen, but I guess it was four because I wasn't counting uh, Trevon. But there's, there's you know, four. You look out there sometimes and you're like, man, Everybody out there is coming back. Everybody out there has got another year. So it is relatively young. But I would argue that in college football, that's just youth is the the way of the life. There's not a lot of guys sticking around all the way through senior years. So you get a lot of freshmen, sophomore, juniors playing on these teams. Um, as far as our staff, they work really hard. Uh, Dan does a good job leading them. And uh, each guy brings a lot of uh, energy, enthusiasm, and ideas. And they kind of own their position groups. And they do a good job putting the overall plan together and, you know, not trying to do too much, but trying to give the other team some problems. Because if you line up, sit in the same place all the time, you eventually get blown up. And we try to make sure our guys are moving around or getting in a advantageous position. And uh, Dan and them have done a good job of that. What is it about Derek Brown that just makes him as good as he is? Uh, Derek's an extremely good athlete. I mean, first of all, when you put athleticism in a person's body that, that, that's that size, I mean, he was a great basketball player. He's a great athlete. You can see him when he gets – he has ball skills. I mean, he gets interceptions. He gets fumbles. He's around the ball, and he's explosive. I mean, when you got that kind of twitch and you're as big as he is, just hard to block. And uh, he's been a very disruptive player in this league for a long time. Kirby, you've coached a lot of games, and Jordan Hare – both in two different programs. Is there anything else about that stadium and that crowd that makes it a tough place to play, or is a lot of it just kind of situational? They've been rivalry games, big games, night, prime time, et cetera. Yeah, they they do a tremendous job. I, don't, I mean, I would assume everybody feels that way that goes there and plays, not just you know an Alabama or a Georgia coach, because those are two of their biggest uh, their biggest rivalries. Um, but I would assume it's like that for everybody because. They, they sell out their crowd just like our guys do. It's loud at home. Um, they've got a, a really impactful uh, home home field and home crowd. And this is probably the, you know, their biggest home game of the year so far. So uh, I know they'll be uh, ripping and raring to go. But, I mean, when we go to Tennessee, it's loud. When we go on the road and play in the SEC, it's loud. But uh, Auburn's one of those places that, 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 uh, that brings the environment that you expect in the SEC. Coach, just see if you had an update on Lawrence Cager and uh, Trey Hill. Yeah, well, um, we're expecting Lawrence to be able to go out and practice today. Um, it should be fine. And then uh, Trey's got an ankle, but uh, he's going to be able to practice today, as far as we know. I'll find out more when I get out there, but they're both cleared to practice. Um, f following up on a Dan and Glenn is the co uh, coordinators and everything. What do you see in their uh, chemistry and being able to lead the defense? And then also, um, so once you brought D D Dan on to coach linebackers, when did you see his qualities as to uh, lead and everything like that? Uh, well, I'd seen that before I ever brought him in. I mean, he worked at Alabama um, with us, and uh, I'd seen his ability to, to interpret information, to relay information to coaches, and uh, just work with him. And when you work with somebody, as much as many hours we spend up here, you find out a lot about them, their work ethic and what they're all about. And uh, he was somebody that we had on our radar for a long time, and he went and was successful at Memphis, did a great job coaching there. and. Uh, 
so he was an easy hire to come here as our uh, outside backers coach. And uh, since he's been here, he's done nothing but lead and do a good job and uh, continues to demand and command the respect of the players. And uh, the players like him. He does a good job. So he and, he and Schumann have both done a good job of that. Kirby kind of back to Auburn on the perimeter. With Schwartz, how do you – try to contain someone that fast. I know you had Hardman who could be a headache for opposing coaches. When when you've got a secondary that's fast but not as fast as their fastest receiver, how do you kind of go about trying to limit the damage someone like that can do? Well, you try to know where he is. I mean, they do a good job of, of putting him in different locations. They don't leave him in one spot. Um, he's not always the feature guy. Sometimes he's the decoy and sometimes he's not the decoy. And you don't really ever know. <laughs> which one he's going to be, and um, he's very explosive. Um, I think awareness is, is how you handle it because, you know, we got the players we got, they got the players they got, and they don't know nobody in the country is as fast as that guy. So nobody's going to be able to match up with him and just run with him. you gotta, you got to have ways to put people over top of him. you got to have ways to protect against him. Uh, you got to have ways to get your hands on him. I mean, they're, they're going to get him the ball. you got to go tackle him. Um, good thing is we're not in a – track race against him. <laughs> you know, we got to play football against him, and he's a really good football player. Coach, a couple of years ago when we'd ask you about Richard LeCount, you usually start shaking your head. What's your description of his growth and progress over the last few years? Uh, he's worked really hard. Um, Richard has always worked hard. He's always been a competitor. Uh, the thing you know about Richard is he loves football. And uh, there are very few days out there that he does not give you his best and he does not just enjoy it and love the game. The difference in Richard now and then is he's bought in a little more into the understanding of what I have to do within this system. What is my job? And uh, I have to make calls and decisions on my side of the field that are critical to our success. And I've said after the game, I think in the last two to three weeks, he's taken a little more ownership in that. He's taken a little more initiative to watch tape and not just think I can just go out there and ball. I got to go understand and play within the defense to make plays, and he's doing a better job of that. Um, Kirby players have said that one of your goals for the defense every week is to make the offense one-dimensional and you know kind of try to suffocate them. With what Auburn does running football and how critical that is for their offense, how I guess extra important is that going to be this week to disrupt what they want to do? Well, it's no more extra important this week than it ever is. I mean, it's important every week, but uh, you can't do it at the cost of giving up explosive plays, and that's that's the balance you come to with Auburn is, you know, you can sell out to do that, and you got explosive playmakers on the outside. You know, they got some really good wideouts. Seth's a great wideout. They've got Eli, and they've got guys that have been there and played. So you can't sell out to stop the run uh, and expose yourself to the, the wideouts they've got and a quarterback that's – uh, a good playmaker and ability to throw the ball and is playing as good as any freshman I remember playing in this conference, walking in and just playing straight off the street. He's done a good job of that. So these these guys have got good players. We can't sell out and stop the run, if that's what you're asking. With George Pickens in this figuring to be an emotional game for him, given it's back in his home state and some of the things Auburn players said about him last year, do you manage him any differently this week, knowing that it is going to be you know a big game for him? Yeah, they're all big. I mean, they were big. I, I realize what you're pointing at and saying, but it being emotional that he was a, a committed to them for a long time. But that doesn't take away from what happens when you step inside the lines. I mean, when you step inside the lines, you got to go execute. you got to focus on the task at hand. You got to block out all the the noise and uh, outside stuff, and you got to go play. So that doesn't change week to week. Kirby, when you watch the uh, Auburn film, I'm sure you see a lot of guys from Georgia that that you know pretty well from their high school tape or evaluating them. Is that uh, much different than other SEC teams? I know uh, everyone recruits this state, but uh, you know, and and it is, when you guys recruit as well as you do nationally. Um, is there some tough decisions to make regarding guys in Georgia that you know maybe take a kid from somewhere else? There's always tough decisions. There are tough decisions on Georgia kids and Georgia kids. I mean, there's just, just tough decisions, period, in recruiting because, number one, you can't get everybody you want, and you want to get the ones you want, and you're never 100% on the ones you do want. 
So you, uh, you, you have to make really hard decisions. You try to make them based on intangible factors and things that you think are critical to their success and, uh, and to your needs. And um, there are a lot of Georgia kids, as you look down this roster, there's kids that we recruited hard that, um, that they beat us on, and then there's some that, that they didn't. But at the end of the day, the, the state line that you grew up in probably doesn't matter in this game, just like we've got some Alabama kids. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to be about how you play. Coach, I always hear a lot about complementary football in, in terms of the mix of the offense and the defense and how they meld together. Is this about the mix that you expected as far as how your offense and defense are playing in? Could you share your philosophy on how complementary football works at Georgia? Yeah, complementary football is meant to be where you help each other. That's That, that really doesn't change anywhere you coach. You want them to be complementary. You want both sides to help each other out, whether that's us creating an advantage through a turnover or the offense getting the ball out of a coming out situation and flipping the field position. Um, you want that. I mean, I don't think any coach would tell you they don't want complimentary football. Um, but to the extent that we've been able to, to play it, there's been games that we've really done a good job of that, and there's been games that we haven't. And, uh, I, I, you know, the two, the two work independently within the game, but they're always working together to whether it's eat up time, force turnovers, uh, create field position, you're always trying to help uh, benefit each other. And that's something that we, we talk about and we work on hard, but uh, ultimately it comes down to the individual success of both sides that makes it a compliment. Coach, can you give us some of the backstory on George Pickens? When did you know you were going to get him? When did he call you and say, hey, I'm coming to Georgia? Kind of the backstory in his recruitment, if you will. Uh, George was a kid that we recruited all the way throughout and uh, came over to a couple home games. Um, we had him over in the summer. I mean, he's he's a kid that had been here several times. He played on a seven-on-seven -seven team out of uh, Georgia. And so he got to spend a lot of time with uh, a lot of the kids we recruited. Um, and didn't really know till very late, I forget exactly when it was, but I thought in our home visit, it was very obvious that he uh, was thinking about making some change. He saw the ability to throw the ball at our place, and he saw three guys leaving. You know, and he once once we had three guys leave our team, two left early, and a tight end and a back, it cleared things up for him that he thought he was going to be able to have an impact and um, decided to come. This may be better suited for next year, but, I mean, you've got this game this week that has a lot on the line like most of the – George Auburn games do, but with the scheduling change, does it seem strange that, that this may be the last one of these in, in November for a long, long time? Hadn't really thought about it that way. I mean, uh, if it's not them, it'll be somebody else. And, you know, it's it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in our conference. You're not, you know, it's, it's every week, man. Um, there's good teams to play, and you can't take anybody lightly. So whether it's early in the year, late in the year, I don't think it changes much. Thank you guys.